Today, I'm gonna to walk you through making a set of custom keys for your mechanical keyboard. Now, working with glass is a little bit easier when it comes to silicone and clay, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'll start by laying out the keys to get a rough idea of where I want them to be and how much space I'll need. Now, I'm actually gonna take a dry erase marker and just mark some corners where I'm probably gonna put my mold box and we'll need a base of clay. Now, let's grab some of our synthetic modeling clay. We want a base of clay to set our keys on since we're gonna be doing a two-part mold. Aim for about an eighth of an inch here to make sure you've got a good foundation for your second half. Using a rolling pin makes this process a lot quicker. Move the clay back onto the glass and now you can see where those corner marks we made earlier are really gonna come in handy. We'll move the extra clay from the top and bottom and then fill in the gaps we've got on the sides. Use your finger to smooth out that area and make sure you've got a clean base to set the keys on. Now we'll take our keys. We're gonna use just a little bit of clay on the inside of those keys. That way when we set it onto the base of clay, it sticks. Now we're pressing the keys down until they just touch the base of clay and make a slight seal between them. If we push them down any further, we'll end up with that unsightly seam line. Now our keys are in place, so let's grab some corrugated plastic to quickly make our mold box. The corrugated plastic is perfect because you can set it against the clay, measure out the length you need, and just score halfway through. That lets you turn the plastic for the next side without actually cutting all the way through, meaning fewer gaps where we're gonna need hot glue later. Leave about a quarter inch between the plastic and the keys for the mold. That makes sure you have enough space for registration marks. We'll talk about that later. Now once we've got our box made, we're just going to put our hands on the top and we're going to press it down into the clay itself. Now we'll hot glue that one corner and we're good to go. Now for some extra measure, I've actually taken one of our spatula tools and I'm actually going to go around on the inside and just squish that clay up against the walls. Call me paranoid, but if you've had a mold you're making leak, it's a terrible experience. Not something you want to repeat. Now once we're all smoothed out, we're going to need to add some registration marks. Registration marks actually help your mold not shift around when you're doing castings. It means a better fit for the two halves, and which means better parts in the end. I'm using the end of a pencil here, of the eraser, to actually make just a couple of holes. That'll be perfect. I'm not going all the way through the clay, but that'll work nicely. You can also use the other side of the pencil. I've removed the lead and flattened it out. That lets me put some shallow grooves into the clay that will give me some lateral stability. We're gonna use our amazing mold rubber. This is a 10 to one system here, but it can be done by volume or by weight. Now a 10 to one system means we'll measure out how much base we need and take one tenth of that total. That one tenth, that's gonna be how much of the catalyst we'll need. Make sure to shake the catalyst up before you pour it in. This one naturally separates a little bit, so you wanna make sure it's nice and even. Now the base is white and the catalyst is bright pink. So you know you've got things well mixed when you've got a consistent pale pink color with no swirls. When you're pouring your silicone, you wanna pick one spot, not directly on the part, and pour in that one spot consistently. The silicone will work its way around the keys naturally, making sure air doesn't get trapped. Now we've let this set up overnight, so I'm just gonna grab my putty knife and dislodge the clay from the glass. This is where that glass comes in handy. Now I'm doing this with a putty knife and being a little bit careful because if we take our time here, all of this clay will come off in one piece. It makes cleanup so much easier. So take your time, dig into the corners, and if you need an assist, grab something from the spatula set and then go ahead and pry that off and then it should come out in one piece. Those little balls that we put into the end of the keycaps come out no problem. And then we're just gonna use our pick tools to just get rid of any excess clay that's hanging around. You're not gonna get everything, that's okay. Now a big part of this is the seal around the edge of the keys themselves. Go ahead with an X-Acto knife and just at the same angle as the key, try to cut off that extra flashing. If you have that flashing in there, it'll actually block your second half from getting everywhere you need it to be. Now, before we pour the second half of this mold, we've got everything prepped. We need to put on a little bit of rubber to rubber mold release. Two or three layers of this will do the job, but you have to wait five minutes in between for those to dry. So rubber to rubber mold release is perfect. It'll make sure your silicone sides don't stick to each other. 
Now we're going to use some toothpicks with the sharp points cut off to create vents in our second half. We'll use those vents to actually inject our resin with a plastic syringe, and doing that will actually help release the air too. All right, now that that's all done, it's time to mix up our second half of silicone, same as before, 10 to one by weight or by volume. We're gonna take our time pouring this second half to make sure we don't knock over those toothpicks. Slow and steady wins the race. Another set overnight, and then we can actually just push the silicone mold out separate the two halves and then remove our keys and our toothpicks and we'll be ready to cast. Now we're going to use our Illumares RC3 Tan. It's a perfect casting resin. It's easy to demold. The work time is pretty short though, so we're going to move quickly. I'm going to use some blue and orange dye to give these keys a real custom look. I'm just going to divvy up and mix equal parts one to one of side A and side B by volume and then into those small one ounce cups, mix in my colors here, and then we're gonna start going. Here's where you can get creative and use whatever colors you want. Try different combinations and see what you like. Having this mold means you can try as many times as you want. So to start, I'm gonna use a little bit of color and I'm gonna create a fun pattern on the top of those keys. This is gonna stay there even though we're gonna use some injection, no big deal. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of the orange on the second half of the mold. A lot of air can get trapped in the underside of those keys. So we're gonna take our time and make sure we've got all the resin covering there. Now we'll go ahead and put our two halves of the mold together and then grab our plastic injector and go ahead and soak up some of the rest of the blue resin. Insert the syringe and inject the resin until it comes out the opposite vent. Now we'll let this cure for at least 15 minutes, but this is a pretty thin mold, so we're gonna give it a little bit more time, maybe an hour. If you wanna speed this process up and ensure a really good casting, go ahead and preheat your mold to about 120 Fahrenheit in an oven or a toaster oven of some kind that you don't plan to eat out of. Now once that's all done, we're just gonna separate the two halves and remove the plastic flashing that's in there in between the two molds. Two-piece molds like this take some time, but are totally worth it. You can get a ton of great castings in them and an infinite amount of color combinations, even clear keys too. At Illumilite, we're always here to help and support you in any way we can. So don't hesitate to reach out with questions or comments. As always, hit the subscribe button and the bell to make sure you get notified when we're putting out a new video.